I don't just grade 3D printers on just one aspect of them. I grade them on three aspects. There's price, there's capability, and there's ease of use. And if that hand motion looks familiar to you, join me for a second in saying, rest in peace, chief. Yeah. <laughs> What would you consider a perfect 3D printer? When I wrote The Beginner's Guide to the 3D Printing Galaxy, I introduced people to the idea that they shouldn't just grade 3D printers on a single idea, the price of them, but that they should look at the capability and the ease of use over time of the 3D printers that they're considering. Now, I myself, was grading the 3D printers that I was reviewing on this same scale. But back then, I was using kind of a comparative scale. I would give numbers to price, capability, and ease of use on a 1 to 10 scale based loosely on what I had given other 3D printers in the past. This was problematic, you can imagine, because, well, if a uh, one 3D printer prints smaller than another 3D printer, then that's a lower capability, but if it prints with multiple tool heads at the same time, then that's a greater capability. So, what is it, a wash? Do they have the same capability score? I knew that I needed something a little bit less subjective. Then along came the Kaiwu Tycoon, and this printer impressed me so much. It was just so easy to use, but it didn't have some of the pretty features that other 3D printers had. And I thought, man, I'm loving this printer and I want to give it a good score. And when I do the score, trying to be as objective as possible, it's scoring really well overall, but am I just being biased? And so I took my simple three column spreadsheet and expanded it out into a more objective many column rubric that all broke down eventually into that same one through 10 in price, capability, and ease of use for each 3D printer. Finally, I thought I could compare 3D printers based on a more objective scale with less of my personal bias in there. But I had to come up with the idea at this time of what was a 10? What would be a 10 in price? What would be a 10 for capability and ease of use? So let's talk about what a 3D printer would need to be to score a perfect 10 in all of these categories and be, in my opinion, the best possible 3D printer out there. Keeping in mind, this is an entirely theoretical discussion. There is no perfect 10 3D printer yet. Now, price may seem pretty straightforward. A more expensive 3D printer gets a lower score, a cheaper 3D printer gets a higher one. But even when I was just working with the three column format, I recognized that price, price is a hard number and we can just deal with it. So all I had to do was translate that number into a score, but I needed to bend that curve a little bit. It couldn't be a straight line linear comparison. Still, a perfect 10, that was easy. Free 3D printer. Now that's not reasonable in a commercial market, but I'll tell you what, if I ever run for emperor of the world, a 3D printer in every house would definitely be the platform that I would work with. Next, there's capability. And in my rubric, it consists of a number of different points that are all added up, weighted evenly, and added to the final score. Now, none of these points have anything to do with the specific hardware that is accomplishing the final result. I wanted as much as possible for this score to be hardware agnostic, but it does lend itself to better hardware producing better results overall. Still, if we're talking about a 3D printer that's perfectly capable, that has a 10 in the capability score, well, it would have to have a very large build volume, be able to do multiple, multiple materials, not just one or two, but be able to mix those materials as well. And quite frankly, 
I only know of one 3D printer that even exists that could get close to a 10 in this, and that would be the Polyjet 3D printer by Stratasys. And if you've never heard of this 3D printer, my opinion, when the patents for this sucker expires, I want one of them in my house. It uses liquid curing resin, but instead of putting in a vat and pulling the print out, it lays the resin down layer by layer and then follows it with a UV light to cure it immediately. And because they're putting it out with an inkjet head, they can have multiple inkjet heads, meaning that you can build with hard material, soft material, or even put down both in the same place and let them mix before you harden them together. You can do any color. You can do discrete color changes just like you can do with an inkjet printer. You can even do dissolvable supports as part of this. As far as capability goes, the Polyjet 3D printers probably get closest to getting a 10 in the real world right now. Basically a perfect 10 is a replicator from Star Trek The Next Generation. Now lastly, there's ease of use, which again is broken down into multiple points that each get a score and is brought together for the final score. Now, for a lot of hobbyist 3D printers, they'll say, I don't care about how easy it is to use. I just care about what it can do. If it's, if it's got a garbage interface, I'll punch through that just so long as I can get the print. But the truth is, whenever you start a 3D print, there's a little bit of calculus that goes on in the back of your head. And if you've got a 3D printer that is likely to jam or fail, that you're gonna have to restart a print five times before you get it right, that the bed is always gonna be out of level and so you've always gotta fiddle with it every single time. If you're not really sure whether it's gonna work or whether you're gonna have to tear it apart to do some minor fix on it because of some bad part of the design, all of this, goes into the ease of use score. It's not just whether or not it has a pretty user interface that is easy to use, but it's also whether the 3D printer itself over time is going to be reliable and easy to use. Or if it's not gonna be reliable, if it's going to be easy to get it reliable again. This is why I assign a pretty good score to the Flash Force Adventure 3. One of the most common breaks in 3D printing is the nozzle, and replacing the nozzle on most 3D printers involves getting your hand into dealing with hot parts. The Adventure 3 responded to that by making a nozzle that you can literally just push two buttons, pop it out, and pop a new one back in, and that to me was huge, a huge step up in the ease of use score for the Adventure 3. Doesn't help that it also has Wi-Fi and it just got a great user interface, just one of the easiest 3D printers to use ever. Likewise, the Toybox 3D printer got an ease of use score that was so overwhelmingly easy to use that it, it kind of propelled it to being one of my best 3D printers overall because you just push a button and the 3D printer starts printing. Even though you have to give up the control of your 3D printer to a web service. A lot of people don't like that, but I couldn't deny that as far as being easy to use, tip of the top with that one. And again, if we're talking about a perfect score on the ease of use scale, well, a perfect 10 would once again have to be the Star Trek replicator. You just say to it, whatever you want. It searches its database for what that entails, finds it, and makes it for you. So I guess in the end, a perfect 10 on my 3D printer scale is going to be a Star Trek replicator from the next generation. It can make anything you want. You just kind of throw your voice at it in the general direction and it does it. And it doesn't cost anything because they lived in a post-scarcity economy. So maybe a perfect 10 3D printer isn't something that we can achieve, but it definitely is a goal that we can go for. And I think that we are getting closer and closer to that. If we can just take these 3D printers that are ridiculously easy to use and take these other 3D printers that are ridiculously capable and put them together, we might not get a perfect 10, but I'd be excited by a perfect nine. Well. I'm not quite sure how that 3D printer would cost $100, but I'm hoping. What would you consider a perfect 
Ah, get my hand out of there. <laughs> I'm never gonna start this video. I wanna more this direction next time. Will that work? I don't know. Let's try that again. Ah, I feel like my hair is just in my face. I need a softer cushion for this new chair. Ah, I don't care how easy to use the 3D printer is. Ugh, dog gone, ruined by a burp. It's a good take too. Well, that's the end of the video, but wait, before you go, while you're checking out this cool thing posted by one of you on the What You Making channel on my Discord, why don't you open up the cards and see what deep dive into the topics of this video you can do. And this is really cool. Yeah, I really enjoy it when people connect with me on social media. That's why I've got links to all the socials in the description and I hope you'll check them out. I've also got a Patreon which you can check out here and I'll tell you a little secret about the suggested videos. This is the one that YouTube thinks that you'll like. This is the one though that I think you'll like. Which one of us is right? Only one way to know for sure, gotta watch them both. And remember, safety first, because I really do care about you, and see you next time. <laughs>